In this video, we compute and submit the ISBN exercise from series 9. As we will work with the ISBN 13 system again, we can reuse the function is ISBN 13 from series 8, since this function determines whether or not a string argument corresponds to a valid ISBN 13 code. In this exercise, we should write a function display book info that takes an ISBN 13 code as its argument. If the ISBN 13 code is valid, the title, authors and publisher must be retrieved from the online database of books and printed in the format as used in the example below. If the ISBN 13 code is invalid, an error message must be printed as shown in the example. In the online database that can be found on isbndb.com, you can retrieve data about certain books using the ISBN 13 code of that book. For this exercise, we simulated this API. If you open this URL, you will get this file. This is a file in XML format. It contains a lot of information, but for our exercise, we are only interested in the book's title, authors and publisher. The URL used consists of two parts. The first part indicates the actual website, while the second part is the parameter section. In this section, the part highlighted in red is the code of the book you wish to look up information for. So, using a valid ISBN 13 code, we should open the corresponding file in the ISBN database and retrieve the requested data. We'll now switch to PyCharm. As previously mentioned, we copy the code of the isISBN13 function from series 8. This function tests whether a string argument corresponds to a valid ISBN code. We will now write the function display book info that takes a ISBN 13 code to be retrieved as its argument. In fact, we can split this problem into two parts. First of all, we check the ISBN 13 code by calling the isISBN13 function. If it is a valid code, we can process the data from the file. This means that we use the online database, open the file, read the records, extract the information and close the file again. If the argument is not a valid ISBN 13 code, then the indicated error message should be printed and the function should be terminated. And that gives us this code. If we have a valid code, we can skip to the second part of our solution. To be able to work with online files, we should import the module urllib.request. Once the module is imported in our script, all methods available for working with files can be accessed. When opening an online file, we must enter the URL and supply the correct parameters. In our case, this is the parameter section. So we just have to supply the correct ISBN 13 code of the book we wish to look up information for. So in the code we get this. This is the URL and the parameter section. And in this parameter section, the last part is replaced by the string argument code. To make sure that this ISBN 13 code does not contain any blank characters, at both ends we apply the string method strip. The online file is opened by the URL open method of the imported module urllib.request. This method requires as its argument the online file name, that is the URL, plus the necessary parameters, and it assigns the result to uh, file object info. The file is now opened and has the name info. We can now scan all the lines in the file and select only data from the lines starting with title, author's text or publisher text. 
to scan all the lines from the file, we use a for loop. Since we reach XML files where the lines consist of a sequence of bytes instead of strings, these lines must first be converted to strings before we can apply a number of string methods. This conversion is done using the decode method. For each line in the info file, we first convert the line to a string and then we can apply the string function starts with to this line. This function checks whether the initial letters of the line correspond to title, author's text or publisher text respectively. We briefly revisit the example on the donor. The line containing the title starts with the tag title, so we will indicate this in our program. If the line starts with the tag title, we will delete the tags from the line, both the start and end tags, and then we print what remains of the line. But tags will be removed from a line in the same way for the three records, the title, author and publisher. To prevent code duplication, we provide a separate function, remove tags. How can we remove tags? Since tags are always between less than and greater than symbols, we search for the first less than symbol and the first greater than symbol in the string and then delete the characters between these symbols. In other words, we'll make a new string with the remaining characters in the string. We repeat this process as long as there are tags in the string. So we return to the code in PyCharm and add the function remove tags before our function display book info. The string argument is first stripped of all leading and trailing white spaces by using the strip method. Then we remove the tags as discussed earlier. As long as there are tags in the string, we look for the first less than symbol and the first greater than symbol. We track both positions, uh, keep these positions in the variable start and stop and remove through slicing the characters between these symbols. Since strings are immutable, we create a new string S for this purpose. This code is checked as long as there are tags marked by less than and greater than symbols in the remaining string. What is left of the string after stripping is returned. In the display book info function, Tags can now be removed from a line by calling the method remove tags and what remains of the line can be printed as requested. So when we now look at the code, we get something similar for the lines that start with title, with author's text and with publisher text. We look at the print instruction uh, for title. The word title is now followed by the actual title after removing the tags. In the same way, the line that begins with author's text and publisher text are selected from the file as well. In the short version, this results in this code. The line with the author's name starts with author's text. In each line, starting with this text, the trailing comma must be deleted as well as the tags. To remove this comma, we add R strip to our line from which the tags are removed. In the same way, we check whether a line begins with the publisher text tag. In addition to the word publisher text, this tag contains at least one space. This is what you see here in the script. We check this in the code and look for the publisher text tag that is followed by at least one space. If the lines start with this text, the word publisher is printed and followed by the string from which the tags have been deleted. Using this for loop, every line in the file was checked, converted to a string and checked whether it starts with the correct word. When all the lines have been processed, the file must be closed. So in the this book info method, we first checked 
whether the string argument corresponds to a valid ISBN 13 code. If this is not the case, an error message will be printed and the method ends. If it is a valid ISBN 13 code, we open the web page, the corresponding file is opened and the lines in the file are read one after another. Each line is checked for the presence of certain star tags and any tags are removed from this line and the remaining text is printed. Once the file has been checked completely, it is closed. For testing this method, we use a doc test again. We take the data from the donor and transfer them to PyCharm. We run the doc test and since we do not get any errors, we conclude that our solution is correct. We transfer it to the donor and submit it. And we obtain a correct result. In this video, we used an online database to view the data of books based on a valid ISBN 13 code.